Uh, my name is Samuel McAllister and I'm an Autodesk BIM specialist based in Sydney, Australia and uh, I'm responsible for a number of Autodesk products in the building information modelling workflows. So uh, to get started, I'm just going to quickly do this little safe harbour statement, uh, just something we put in our presentations at the beginning. Uh, some of the stuff I will be showing you will be uh, a little bit futuristic in terms of where we're going with a lot of the technology. Um, so I'll move on from here and get into the agenda for today's webinar. If you do have any questions, please feel free to type them into the uh, question or chat window and we'll do some Q&A at the end. I'll do my best to provide you with some answers. So uh, what I'm going to mainly focus on is our core building information modeling product and that is our Revit platform. And I'll be discussing on some of the connecting products that come inside of our Autodesk AEC collections that do conceptual design, design development, uh, visualization and presentation for marketing designs, and then where we're going with other BIM development for fabrication and operations. And we'll leave some time at the end for a 10 minute Q&A. Um, I can share some links to some other presentations and information that we've done in the past on this and do my best to uh, answer any questions that go in here to, into the chat window or into the question uh, box inside of the GoToWebinar. So the objectives we have for building information modeling inside of the home builder or house builder market is we're trying to improve the customer satisfaction um, by marketing the building information modeling data with the visualization. So with that 3D model, you can reuse it to do those high-end visualizations that you see on a number of websites or now there's VR that's happening with uh, say Samsung uh, phones or iPhones and VR headsets. Uh, the data can be used to improve that customer satisfaction so they can interact with the design virtually before even going out on site. Uh, we want to look at how we can actually leverage the building information modeling uh, tools to improve productivity instead of producing a set of plans, sections, elevations, details, schedules, independent of one another. We're trying to use parametric data to bring it all together. We want to be able to maximize our resources to get the most out of the software to be more productive. Uh, I want to cover over how Revit can deliver the conceptual designs right through to the completion output. And the completion output could be in the form of 2D drawings for a contractor to work off or even extracting out some of the 3D data to go into a CNC machine or into precast concrete fabrication. Uh, it can go all the way through to manufacturer to operations and maintenance of that uh, finished product. And then uh, I just want to highlight how uh, the Autodesk collections can help you differentiate yourself from uh, differentiate yourself from other house builders with these collection of products. It gives you a lot of tools to do um, a vast variety of uh, more productive workflows, better sales and marketing presentations, and even offer more services to your customers. Uh, and finally, I want to leave you with a technology platform uh, for your current workflows, but also uh, hopefully present something that can help with your future workflows to differentiate yourself. So a little bit of a background about Autodesk. Uh, we've been running since about 1984, so 33 years. Uh, we've invested in a large amount of technical people, market people, sales people, the software and technology to help uh, customers go out and realize that their ideas and then compete for more work and bid and win more jobs. Uh, we have about 12 million professional users uh, and 170 million uh, of consumer applications that includes four global strategic partners with uh, other companies like Microsoft, Intel, Hewlett Packard and IBM, as well as a huge amount of third-party developers writing add-ins and APIs for our platforms, which I'll touch on later in this presentation. Um, so we have a lot of uh, loyal customers and we're in the um, uh, Fortune 100 companies. And we also provide now free access to 
students having access to our software. So if you're on a student license, you can actually get access to all these, these applications for free and even get access to cloud uh, credits. Um, this is a bit of our future of making things. This is where we're going with some of the technologies. And uh, I'll be showing a little bit more of this at the end. Uh, it sort of touches on uh, our augmented reality tools where you can actually place an image or a barcode or a QR code on an object or uh, a wall or a floor as been shown here. And it's going to actually reveal what's hidden inside of that wall or floor or ceiling. So if you have to be out on site and maybe you're doing some maintenance or you need to drill into a wall and you want to know if there's a pipe in there or a pipe in the ground, you can put these barcodes, in this case a graphic, on that particular asset and you can see what's behind that wall or under that floor before you actually uh, go out and engage doing a, a maintenance or operation on that particular facility. So some of the future technologies uh, that I'm just highlighting here. So uh, with building information modeling, if you haven't heard of uh, BIM before, this is essentially where um, a lot of architecture and engineering firms are working at the moment. So uh, it's a case of moving from 2D to 3D, but the key part of building information modeling is the information component. It's what you put inside the 3D data that can be used for scheduling or for uh, fabricating or operation and maintenance. So um, building information modeling, when it applies to uh, house builders, uh, what we want to have here is like a master model that can have different design options. You can load in uh, what's called families, uh, kind of like similar to AutoCAD blocks. All the templates you can have in this master model, which you can use for various design uh, teams or different iterations of a particular uh, style of house. With that, as we go around the life cycle of the design and build for a house builder's information modeling, we can first of all leverage the 3D data for sales and marketing where we can start to do our photorealistic visualizations or maybe we want to get into VR, the virtual reality for walkthroughs through the house. We can use that at the very uh, first instance to start uh, selling those units to the public and getting them to engage with them in a, a virtual world. We can then start to look at the operations of that facility. So you could be looking at lighting analysis or energy analysis. There's a number of tools within our applications that allow you to test these in the virtual world before you go out and build them. We can bring in engineering services as well. So if you want to add a high level detail to your building information model, you can bring in your ductwork or your plumbing or your electrical information and you can really do a deep dive on how exactly that building is going to go together and whether there's going to be any clashes in the model uh, that could cause problems on site. And then finally, construction, being able to prefabricate as much as you can off-site so you have better quality, less risk of errors, and you're going to be able to build faster, so delivering on time and on budget, uh, being able to fabricate off the model is really important for the construction process. And finally, handing over the keys and potentially uh, information to the customers to help them manage that, that asset. So uh, you could offer an additional service with the building information modeling when you hand it over to the customer to provide like an aftercare service. Um, and this could be like the augmented reality service, being able to uh, repair certain parts by having QR or barcodes on certain assets and being able to bring out that information when you're out on site directly off a mobile device. We provide the software uh, now as collections. We used to provide them as uh, what's called building design suites. And uh, in August last year, we came out with the AEC industry collections. And this covers architecture, engineering, and construction and gives you access to about 18 different types of software. Um, it's all subscription now, so you can uh, subscribe and have it monthly or quarterly or yearly, annually, um, depending on how, how uh, much you need, need the software. You can also buy individual products, but it can work out quite cost-effective if you have a collection because it gives you access to a wide variety of different 
uh, tools that have different strengths in certain types of designs and visualizations and construction modeling tools. Uh, if you do want to know more about this, we have uh, a list of what's in the collections. And if I just tab across to this website here, this is the AEC collection. Uh, so this is the one for uh, architects and engineers, and that's the annual price. However, um, you need to talk to your reseller to uh, get prices. Uh, that's just the retail price that we have on our website. And this will cover a number of the uh, applications. So you can see there's quite a lot included within this collection here. So uh, we kick off with the BIM design benefits here. I want to take you through uh, some of the themes that relate back to that, that wheel of uh, doing the conceptual design, looking at the analysis, visualizing, uh, then designing, uh, developing the design and document, documenting, and then finally looking at how you can take it into construction modeling and then customer handover for uh, operations and maintenance. Uh, to start with in our Docu documentation. Uh, this is a little stat here that just gives you an example of AutoCAD versus Revit back in uh, 2015 and the amount of time it takes to uh, do task one. So that's creating a set of floor plans and then moving on to your other general arrangement drawings like your elevations and your sections and your RCPs, etc. Uh, when you look at AutoCAD and Revit side by side, to get that initial floor plan out, it's in essence about the same amount of time. But then when you've got to move from a, a 2D package like AutoCAD to produce your elevations and your sections, these can take a little more time. You may have to X-ref things around and align things. And then as things move around and change, you've got to go back and change other things. The benefit of moving into Revit is when you make a change in that floor plan, it updates in all the other views because it's a simultaneous parametric model. So if you look at the stats here, to produce a set of drawings in AutoCAD, it takes almost 30 hours. Whereas if you set it up in Revit, you can get this out in about seven hours. So this is just an example or reason uh, why it's beneficial to make the move to Revit, to learn Revit, because your productivity is going to improve in the documentation process. Uh, before moving into the Revit environment, we have a couple of conceptual design tools that come inside of the AC collection. The first one I want to show here is Format. And um, if this is lagging a little bit, it is a video. Um, I do apologize, there'll be a bit of a lag. The full video will be in the recording if you want to watch the uh, video as we go. What this does is it allows you to pull up a sitemap anywhere in the world from Google Maps and import in a site for you to start sketching over the top of. So it's a really simple push and pull extrude application that allows you to start just doing basic masses with a real world aerial map here. It's to scale as well. Uh, you can work in metric, you can work in imperial if you're in U US. You can bring in various file formats. So in this case, I've got some contextual site houses that I wanted to bring in just to give my design a bit of context. And these uh, site houses were created in our InfoWorks package, which I'll touch on in the next video. I can also bring in a JPG or PNG sketch. So I've brought in a sketch floor plan of the house that I want to sketch up in context inside a format. I can bring it in as a layer. So just like AutoCAD, you can create numerous layers. We can add transparencies. We can rotate it and move it around. It's pretty simple and easy to get up and running with. And I'm just going to pause this just so it catches up. Um, so what I've got here on the screen is now just sketching over the top of that floor plan that I brought into the form environment. You can hit tab to type in the exact values or you can just intuitively uh, add and sketch around the model. And then it's just a push and pull extrusion package that allows me to create the building. So what we've got on the screen here is our master building with some angles to roofs. I can also start to use the simple uh, solar analysis tools to look at the shadows that the building's casting at a certain time or date of the year. 
There's also a solar analysis tool uh, where you can do some basic energy in, uh, solar analysis, looking at the um, effects of sun on certain faces of the building. It has a built-in material library, so you don't have to go and create these. You can do your own custom ones, but it does come with all the materials ready to go. And it's very simple just to paint these materials onto your conceptual design model. So you can do it all in one go, or you can just paint certain faces, see how those materials are going to look, and you're going to get instant feedback on the visual, how those materials are going to look inside of the application. Uh, so we can adjust the date and time of the day. Oh, excuse me, almost sneeze. Uh, adjust the date and time of the day and uh, see how the sun is going to be casting on those type of materials and get some little real-time feedback here on uh, the visuals. We could bring across our Revit families as well. So if I just go back here at the very end, uh, what I have when I pause on the screen here, this uh, covers the interoperability between Revit and our format, for, uh, format package. So the furniture here, I can bring across from Revit, load into Formit, and reuse it in my conceptual design environment. I don't need to re-make uh, this information. I can reuse it. The uh, other one I'm bringing up here is InfoWorks 360. And this is a master, pa master planning package, which allows you to bring in all, all your Formit data or your Revit data or SketchUp data if you want to reuse that. And you can bring it into this master planning environment, which allows you to very quickly uh, animate, visualize, navigate around the entire model at a very large scale and uh, see how it looks like in context. We can also do uh, real-time sun path analysis. So on the screen here is showing the sun moving around at different, different times of the day, different times of the year. And we can very quickly do what we call like a little basic sketch conceptual animation of our design without having to be a 3D visualization expert. So InfoWorks 360 is another package you get inside of the AEC collections that allows anybody to get into doing visualization animation very quickly using some of this conceptual sketching data. Uh, also included with the uh, collections with your cloud access that you get as part of your subscription, you get access to energy analysis. So in this instance, what we can do is we can send our Revit or our format model to the cloud. We can read certain information about its location, so it will read weather stations um, from that particular area, and we can start to make adjustments to the parameters or the properties of certain objects in that model to see how the building is going to perform. So what's happening on the screen here is I'm making adjustments to maybe the makeup of the wall, uh, the plug load uh, efficiency on those sockets, maybe changing the glazing type, and then setting up an option one and an option two and doing comparisons between the two to see how they're going to perform. So by going through this process and making adjustments to the options, we'll start to see some um, uh, of the uh, different settings performing better. So if I just pause here at the second. Um, you can see uh, with the red graphs, it's showing that it's a low performing building. So we need to maybe uh, increase the spec of the materials, look at the operation schedules, look at maybe the uh, HVAC system, the heating cooling. Uh, air conditioning systems and make adjustments to those uh, certain items to try and get it to uh, be a high performing building so it turns out being green. So it's a very uh, easy tool to use and uh, you can do options on the cloud with Insight 360 without having to go back to your authoring tool. So using these simple uh, tools down the bottom here, if I just take it back a little bit and just uh, pause it, if you look at, say, the uh, wall efficiency, we can look at the setting for the um, energy user uh, index here. We can make adjustments to how that wall construction is going to be inside of the conceptual energy analysis space, use the sliders, bring it across, and then we're going to see uh, how much energy it's going to use per year if you add more insulation or different types of cladding, etc. 
And let me just kill the sound on this one. So uh, moving from uh, conceptual energy analysis, we also have tools that allow you to do uh, surveying with either laser scanners or photogrammetry sc scanning. And this is where you can go out on site, and the one I'm just going to be playing through at the moment is a, a site in San Fran, where you can go out, and this is using a um, drone with a GoPro attached. And what it's doing is it's filming the site, and uh, the film information can convert into separate JPGs, and they can be stitched together on Autodesk Cloud to produce a 3D model. So here's 99 photos that they're brought in from the GoPro. And this uses intelligent information to take all the uh, photos, stitch them together, and produce a 3D meshing model. And if I just uh, go back and just pause a little bit, so you can see all the points where the cameras have captured uh, the imagery of this model. And what you're seeing on the screen inside of Recap is the meshing result. So you could either do this with a, a, a laser scanner, like a Faro laser scanner. You can get a survey to go out and and capture points. Or you could do this with photographs. If you want more information, of course, on the roof, if you've got access to a drone, that's going to give you more information. But you can go out and site and very quickly capture it and then bring it into Revit to start designing your building inside of Context. So this is some of the quality you get. The better the camera, the more photos you take, of course, the better the resolution is going to be of the model. But you can section it. You can put items onto certain layers inside a recap. You can tidy up the model as you need to. And then what you're going to see here in a second is the 3D meshing model inside a Revit forming the site for us to start designing on. So the two products we have here, this is Autodesk Recap 360 and Revit. And inside of our Revit application, you insert the uh, laser scan or the photogrammetry scan. And with this information, you can start delineating over the top of it. You can snap to it. It's incredibly accurate. And you can start working over the top of that, uh, that uh, scanning capture and start doing your designs for your proposals with the actual real world uh, photogrammetry scan inside of Revit here. And uh, of course it also picks up where the scan was taken. You can set up your location with our internet mapping service. And when we go to look at say the sun path as well, we know that's going to be accurate and the shadows being cast are going to work with both the Revit data and also that photogrammetry data that was captured uh, via uh, the drone and the camera and then converted via Recap 360. So these are some of the ways you can uh, kick off the conceptual design, capture conceptual information, and start working up your uh, initial design. Then when we move fully into the Revit environment, this is where we get into developing it and fine tuning it, design development. So uh, one thing to, uh, to note here is uh, we now have services such as Collaboration for Revit which you can uh, purchase outside of the collection should you want to be collaborating with other users in different parts of the world. So what I've got on the screen here is uh, the Revit house model and I'm working with the engineer who was based in Melbourne and we're collaborating in real time on how we're going to put steel inside of this design to hold up certain structures. So uh, over here on the right is a communicator tool. I can share screenshots. Uh, the engineer can uh, access the model because it's all uh, housed or synced on the cloud. And in real time, we can be working together and working through the same design, sharing the information, sharing notes as opposed to emails or having to go and see someone in a meeting or do a phone call. We can do it all within the same environment using this uh, collaboration for Revit tool and the communicator uh, 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 add-in here that sits inside of Revit as you're working. 
So this is the requirement. I wanted the engineer to put in some, some columns, some beams. They go away and work on it, and then they send me the solution of what they're proposing. I'm happy with it. That's just a quick screen grab. We do it straight within the application, no having to print anything out or mark it up or anything. You just do it straight within Revit. And then I just reload his model from the cloud. So you do what's called a sync or central, and that updates. And when we zoom in here and we go into uh, the display settings, you can see his beams are actually loaded. They're just grayed out a little bit there in the background. So it's a really fast way to start documenting your model with other collaborators using Collaboration for Revit. Uh, another productivity tool here is the add-ins. So uh, Revit has a number of add-ins that you can use, uh, which you don't have initially in the software, but you can go to our Revit Exchange. Let me just take a, a step back here, and I'll um, just make a quick note of this because uh, APIs, if you're not new to, if you are new to Revit, Uh, what we have is the uh, Revit Exchange, and the Revit Exchange allows you to load in customized third-party add-ins for your application. So last count, I think Revit had over 400 different add-ins, and this is where you go to get them. Some of them are free, some of them you pay, like uh, $3.50, but it's a really powerful uh, way of increasing your productivity in the tool. We also have them for other applications as well, so AutoCAD, Maya, Inventor, they're all available. Uh, but Revit is one of our most uh, popular ones. So if I just take a step back, this is the one I'm showing on the screen, which is one from uh, Dulux. And if I want to load in the Dulux paint finishes into my Revit environment, I can go through the uh, Dulux World of Color uh, display here, choose that particular shade, and instantly paint it onto the walls. So it's a very quick way if you're needing to present to clients or they want to know what type of colors are in there and how they look with certain types of lighting. You can use these add-ins to uh, color the walls, light them in certain ways, daytime or nighttime, and then present this to your, your customers. So that's just one example of uh, add-ins that sit within the application. We also have uh, numerous websites that provide you with content. So it's like uh, we, we have what's called Revit Families, and they're similar to AutoCAD blocks. And the site I'm showing at the moment, this is the Autodesk Seek website. It's free to access. And what you can do here is you can go and search for something like a light fitting, download it directly to your application, load it into Revit. You can add, say, an IES light file if you want it to be accurate about your lighting. You can load it in and instantly place it in your model without having to be uh, creating all this data from scratch. So Autodesk Seek is the uh, official Autodesk site that provides this information. However, there are numerous other websites and uh, local providers who provide um, Australian and New Zealand content. But simply, you can get access to this and you can load it into your Revit environment, host it to a ceiling or to a wall, to a floor, it could be free, depending on how it's created, and very quickly start uh, using it as opposed to having to create a whole new database like maybe you've done over the years with your AutoCAD blocks. Um, documentation is very easy once you're up and running. So the uh, slide that I showed a little while back when comparing AutoCAD versus parametric Revit and the time savings, this is an example of, of what that means. So what we have here is a, a floor plan and maybe I'm wanting to detail up my kitchen area. I can do things like call outs and it'll take me into that view and I can adjust say the displays and the scales. I can um, go into certain elements and automatically dimension them very quickly. So you can see here there's a, a continuous dimension which will measure everything and the dimensioning tools are really powerful for uh, adjusting and moving uh, the text 
you can intuitively move them or you can actually go in and do a deeper dive on adjusting that, that particular style. But once you've got your uh, plan set up, you can extract out a lot of information and automate the document documentation process. Like in AutoCAD, uh, when you go from model space to paper space, rev is the same, you just uh, bring your uh, view, same as the model space, onto a sheet and uh, that will know where it is and will automatically start to number items inside of the uh, sheet stamp. So it's a really uh, fast way of creating um, uh, documentation directly off the model, very intuitive. Once you've got that initial floor plan done, you're going to save a lot of time by uh, using these productivity tools inside of Revit. Uh, another one here is uh, our subscription add-ons, add and I will just pause this one little bit here. Uh, this is one called the quantification tool. And if you're needing to do more advanced scheduling of everything in the model for costing purposes, you can get this add-on as part of your subscription. And it has the area book extension, the building book extension, and the room book extension. And each one allows you to extract certain quantities or part quantities off the models uh, without having to go through any manual sort of processing. So if I just uh, step forward a little bit and we look at, say, the uh, it was the building book extension, and I want to calculate building part uh, quantities, this is the interface you're going to get with the subscription add-on. And what you can do is you can go through the selection and filter through everything in the model you want to capture and then export it out to a Microsoft spreadsheet for uh, others to use and then add uh, exact cost to. You could do this inside of Revit if you really want to do it. You can actually add uh, prices to certain components. But if you're needing to give this to a, uh, a QS, they can work with that Excel data that's extracted def uh, directly out of Revit. So these are the uh, categories, and you can see it's pretty thorough. It will go through everything. Uh, you can look at the different types of ranges and the different options you want to uh, export the formats in, formats in. We calculate, and then we can export those results. And you'll see here in the Excel spreadsheet, it provides you with a pretty uh, solid spreadsheet. And if I just uh, go back a little bit, So it creates numerous tabs for uh, the walls, for the windows, for the doors, for the openings, the floors. All of these are available inside of an Excel spreadsheet. And then it goes through each individual element. So there's a huge amount of data that you can actually extract off the Revit model using this uh, add-in that you get as part of your Autodesk subscription. So this is the quantification add-in that you get uh, and you can get this from the Revit Exchange or from your when you do your Autodesk login um, and you look at managing your products, it will tell you what uh, tools you have available. Uh, construction modeling, so moving beyond just the standard documentation where we do our plan sections, elevations, and, and, and call our details. In our 2014 version of Revit, we produced a tool that allowed you to do divide and parts. And this is where you may take a, a wall and you want to break it up into individual components. So it could be precast concrete or hebel or whatever building material you're working with. You can go through and use these sketch tools to start creating uh, basic shop drawings. So if we look at uh, what we've done here, we've taken the wall, we've divided it up, and then we've added profiles here to break up the junction and we've given it uh, offsets as well, like a gap between each individual component. We haven't had to model these separately. We're using the power of Revit divided parts to actually turn it into a construction component. And we can mirror these. Um, we can also do uh, construction assembly type drawings. So what I have on the screen here is displaced parts. And this allows me to do a corner call out of a model. And if I want to be clearer about how these components are assembled together, I can displace them from the main elements. This is a wall that I've turned into a divided part. And I've pulled out every individual uh, element 
use the dash lines to show how they connect back into each other. And embedded within each element are keynotes. So if I want to tag that information, I want to type this in, I can actually embed it within the wall and then use the power of the uh, tagging tools here to automatically annotate the uh, information on this assembly drawing here. So there's numerous tools like this. If you want to do a deeper dive on, say, a complex detail inside a Revit, these will facilitate that. Uh, inside the uh, collections, we now have the full version of Navisworks Manage. And this allows you to do clash detection, but also allows you to simulate uh, construction planning. So what I've got here is just an example of a little uh, output video I did on the assembly of a house and how the piles are driven into the ground, maybe you've got in situ retaining walls, pile caps, etc. And what we have with this particular model is it's been driven by a construction spreadsheet and over here on the top left hand corner are the stats of what's being done at uh, certain times of the day and the year and what the costs are for materials, labor, subbies, equipment, and then the total costs and then how far we are through the construction program. So uh, this is a really powerful tool. If you need to manage the uh, construction sequencing, you want to communicate to other uh, contractors, subcontractors, when things are going to be installed, how they're going to be installed, and then track, say, the proposed costs versus the actual costs. Navisworks Simulate will allow you to do this. So graphically here, this is probably more of a high-end sort of visual, just showing it uh, going together. But in terms of the actual information, it's been driven by a construction spreadsheet. And you can bring this in from uh, Primavera or from a Microsoft application. It will come in and you can automatically connect it to the construction geometry to drive these tasks that you're seeing on the screen here. So this is going right down into the detail. Uh, there's a couple of little um, connection details here, I think, that come in at the end. Uh, right now, purlins and beams and bracing. All of this can be sequenced out right down to the uh, stud work, the petition work uh, in these walls here. So that's uh, Navisworks Simulate. Uh, it also has clash detection. It has a quantity takeoff application as well. And it uh, has access to cloud rendering and internal animation. Uh, now, you may not be doing the full uh, mechanical electrical or plumbing package inside of the model for housing, but uh, you can actually do this if you've got a heavily serviced house and it's not that hard to get up to speed with. So maybe you've got um, ducted air conditioning as opposed to a, a cassette on the wall and the inductor on, inverter on the outside. You can provide this inside of your Revit application. So what you're seeing on the screen here on the left is the example of the 3D model of the uh, ducted uh, AC running through the house and then there's the diffusers hosted in the ceilings here and we can very quickly run a line of duct from um, uh, the HVAC here and as we uh, run it the duct starts to taper down so you can maintain your pressure from point A to point B it does it automatically and we can connect it up with the risers so if you've got critical ceiling depths and you want to make sure that the uh, aircon unit is going to fit and the ducting is going to fit and the bends and the pipes are all going to work with where you've placed the um, outlets. You can do this with the uh, mechanical component of Revit MEP. So what this means is that you're reducing the risk of any on-site adjustments because the last thing you want to be doing on site is having to drop ceiling heights or box up things to allow for extra spaces for uh, aircon units or extra duct work. So this will allow you to be building a fully parametric uh, real world model with the correct uh, bends without sort of having to fudge them or anything like that. And very quickly inside of the model you can uh, extract your sections, you can look at the detail in here, you can look at any tolerances 
and uh, be assured that there's not going to be any risk of things having to change on site. There's um, a database that does come with Revit for this. However, uh, there's BIMMEPOS, which is the uh, localized community, which provides a lot of templates for doing uh, Australian duck work. Um, so it's well worth checking out their site if you're designing uh, homes and houses that uh, have these types of uh, services within them. So uh, moving beyond the documentation, looking at the sales and marketing, um, it's always important to produce high-end visuals or uh, create different ways to allow your customers to engage with your designs, uh, be confident in what they're buying and uh, understand what they're getting before they uh, pay their deposit. So this is our sales and marketing part where we have inside of Revit uh, the visualization tools that allow you to do photorealistic visuals of, of your model. So the simple one that I'm showing here on the screen is just the point and shoot tool that allows you to get a camera, place it anywhere inside or outside your design and then uh, adjust the field of view for an end product rendering. And uh, we can adjust the eye elevation, the target elevation. You add the materials to the uh, Revit families that you make inside the model. And we have two types of rendering engines. The one that I'd recommend is the Ray Tracer one. It's one of our newer ones. And what we can do inside the product is render without having to be an expert. And uh, this will depend on how much GPU or CPU you have in your machine, but you can typically get out a pretty good render uh, in product within half an hour and then save that to the product project. So uh, the one we have on the screen is okay, but perhaps it's a little bit dark and we want to lighten it or we want to stylize it. What you can do without having to go to say another application like uh, Photoshop is you can use uh, our free application which is called Autodesk Pixlr, uh, P-I-X-L-R. And this will run on your desktop or you can run it on a web browser like I'm doing. And it's got some really fast automated tools to help enhance your visuals. So perhaps at the moment you're sending your visualizations out to a specialist company. Uh, this of course costs money and then it takes a bit of time to manage what needs to be done and checking. You could do this in-house directly off Revit uh, with the uh, internal rendering engine and then use simple tools like Pixlr to uh, customize that final post-production. So that's just a quick example of what you can do without being an expert. Uh, if you do want to go a little bit further, and uh, let's say you want to do rendering, high-end renderings, but you don't have a high-spec PC, you can use our cloud service. You get 100 cloud credits as part of your subscription. And what I've got here is the option to do uh, stereo panorama views. And these are the stepping stone to getting into virtual reality. So we can render it on the cloud. It doesn't affect the processing power of my machine. It doesn't lock it up. I render it, it goes to the cloud and it sends me back a six-sided shot, which I can actually uh, load into a VR device. So if we look at the one just on the screen here, uh, what this has done is it's created this uh, 3D panorama, which I can view on my web browser, but I can also uh, load it to my, uh, my mobile device. So what you're going to see here on the bottom left-hand corner is a QR code, and you can actually scan this via a uh, QR code, a scan reader in your phone. So you can download a scan reader from iTunes. You can uh, scan that image, uh, that barcode, that QR code, and it's going to load it into your phone and you're going to have this panorama view. You can also then load your phone into, say, Google Cardboard or a Samsung headset and you can be moving around and standing inside that space. We do have some uh, newer developments coming out in the space. There's a new tool called Project Play that allows you to actually move from point A to point B. Um, that's still in beta mode at the moment, but uh, this is a very easy way to get into uh, VR without having to invest in, say, um, an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive and uh, expensive hardware. So we provide this via our cloud service, 
and it's very easy to get into and get up and running and uh, get some decent results for your clients. And you could host this on your website, for example. Uh, if you do want to get into full VR, we provide an application called uh, Stingray. And this is the Revit model that's been adapted for use inside of Stingray. And this is just the capture of a real-time walkthrough in the model. So what it does is it doesn't actually have to render. It's all baked into the model. And we can walk through it in real time. And we can prepare this for uh, VR for use inside of an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift. The uh, interesting thing about this, it's got like a little uh, blur and um, uh, a glow diffuser here just to give you some nice bright spots. Uh, if I pause it a little bit, uh, if you look at the quality, it's it's getting pretty photorealistic. Um, it's not having to render it out. You can bring in assets from applications like 3ds Max, which have a lot more detail in them. So you can go right down to the cushions and the fruit and the fruit bowl here. And uh, we move to uh, the left hand side here. This TV is uh, actually playing uh, a television show. It's actually our design live feed here. So uh, you could have your customers come into a showroom, put on the HTC headset, and start walking through your house design and engaging with certain aspects of the model. So if you want to know more about this, uh, Stingray is outside of the AC collections, um, but you can get it a 30-day trial. You can load your Revit model in here and then set it up for uh, real-time VR very easily. Uh, finally, I just want to finish off with um, augmented reality. Uh, again, this is uh, sales and marketing. This is um, a real estate agency in the UK where they're being able to use the tool that I was showing at the beginning where you can do the augmented reality by holding your uh, scanner, which is your mobile device, over an image or over a, a code. And uh, you can see the 3D tangible model. But then you can also move inside the building here. So in this case, we've got uh, the apartment. And uh, using the gyro in the mobile device, we can be panning around and uh, walking around that space. So a very cool way to uh, market that device off the leaflet that you uh, send out to your clients. or your clients take away the leaflet, they can take it home and then uh, use this tool to load up the model, load up all the details, load up all the furniture, and uh, actually get uh, a better experience of what they're uh, investing into. So, so with that, uh, just to summarize uh, what we went through today with the uh, building information modeling workflow, we went through concept design with our uh, InfoWorks 360, Format 360, and Inside 360. Uh, we touched on the analysis, so that was on the Insight 360 uh, application. Visualization, um, helping you to market and sell your designs before before they're built. Uh, design development, being able to improve productivity, uh, improving it four times faster with less resources, a quarter of the cost. Uh, documentation, being able to add a huge amount of detail should you want to, and this reduces the trans translation of errors, reduces risk when you're outside. Uh, construction modeling, uh, reducing uh, the reliance on manual operations instead of having to send out drawings and having them to be redone as shop drawings, checking those shop drawings, doing it directly off the authoring model. And then finally, uh, customer handover. Uh, you can provide uh, different interactions for your customers like the augmented reality or the QR code scanners for maintenance during uh, that building's life cycle to repair certain items. Uh, so that's that's the summary of it. A couple of future uh, developments we have here is uh, where we extend our portfolio into fabrication and uh, construction workflows in our Burn360 space. We have tools like Camduct and Advanced Steel and BIM360. Uh, just a quick summary of this. This is uh, Camduct. These aren't inside of the collections, but they are tools just to be aware of should you want to go into a deeper dive with some of our construction modeling platforms. So in this is instance, Camduct actually allows you to load in 
real world content, actually um, manufacturers content directly into the Revit environment to do detailed uh, uh, parts and then that same information go back to the fabricator and this is the CNC process. If I just pause it a little bit, this is the CNC process that you see. So what it does is it, it takes the uh, ductwork, um, it goes through the nesting process, takes all the uh, information out of it, then does the XYZ cuts on the sheet metal here and then the guys in the shop can uh, start to rivet and crimp and weld these together. Um, the other one is advanced steel. So if you are doing a bit of steel work in your designs, advanced steel will allow you to work with the uh, detail components but get into connection details. And advanced steel has a large database of um, Australian connection details which you can load in and you can correctly detail up that building and then again reuse this information uh, on the shop floor when you're starting to um, cut out the plates and weld or bolt uh, certain items together. So this is just uh, the next level of building information modeling where we start to fabricate directly off that model. And uh, it's an example of it going into um, uh, the shop and the documentation and the cutouts. BIM360, this is um, our next evolution of cloud BIM, so whenever you hear the word 360, it essentially means Cloud or Autodesk. And we've got a number of products that help with uh, the pre-construction, construction execution, and handover process. Uh, one of our newer ones here is BIM 360 Docs. So if you're uh, wanting an application for document control, this will manage your models and your um, sheets and you'll be able to track it. And we've got some other stuff uh, that's just come out for RFIs and uh, on-site uh, defects as well. Uh, we have BIM360 Glue, which is used for clash detection on the cloud for more complex projects. You can publish your models to the cloud. Uh, another consultant can publish their model and you can run a clash detection. The construction execution also has our BIM360 layout. This works with uh, total station, so if you need to do sit outs on site with a, uh, a, like a total station or top comms total station, BIM360 layout will allow you to coordinate that. BIM360 plan uh, for contractors um, working in the site huts need to do day-to-day -day operations. BIM360 field, this is our, our larger application for doing uh, construction execution, tracking what's going on site with the subbies right through to having ads build information that can sync back into Revit for your handover. And then building ops, this is one of our newer tools for actually running the facilities. So this is um, more for um, running big facilities like uh, a university or a hospital, but it could be applicable as well for the uh, house builder market if you wanted to offer that as a service. So the, the last thing just to show um, the interesting field, this is where you can uh, track all the operations on site. So what I've got here in this video is a dashboard showing um, which uh, subbies have the most unresolved issues. Uh, what this means is you can be out on site and you can be capturing information and creating issues which sync to the cloud and can be issued out to different subbies. So uh, this is uh, some of the types that we're going through, uh, the statuses that they're in, the locations of the rooms. Uh, you don't have to do this with the 3D data, you can do it with 2D as well. It runs on a mobile device, so instead of going out on site with rolled up drawings, you can go out on site with uh, your iPad, it has all the drawings in there as PDFs, or the 3D model. You navigate through to the room you're inspecting, that may have an item that needs uh, more information or is in dispute, maybe there's a, a defect issue. You can navigate through it, you can bring up the markup tools and you can add your markups and notes, sync back to the cloud and then uh, the cloud server will distribute emails to all the people involved in that process. They'll get links to that information and be notified on what needs to be addressed. So this is a really powerful uh, field or site application that allows you to track uh, different issues that are happening during the building process. So with that, uh, we are just coming up to the hour. That is the, uh, the end of the presentation. 
uh, we'll move into uh, Q and A. And uh, just a reminder for anybody who hasn't uh, used GoToWebinar before, um, just type in uh, your questions into the question section. Um, I'll also uh, make my email available here. Um, so if you do have any questions afterwards, you can email me at samuel.mcallister at autodesk.com. And it's just coming through. So, uh, first question, uh, okay, it looks like you can see my control panel, so thanks, thanks, Misha, uh, looks like my control panel was blocking a few of the questions, usually that shouldn't come up on uh, a GoToWebinar, but it's like it is today. Um, next question is, uh, how accurate is Recap360 with just photos? Um, that's a good question, so it's, it's, if you do have a, a high resolution camera and you have a number of photos, you can get some pretty good results. But the most accurate way to uh, scan something is, is with a laser scan. That's millimeter perfect. Uh, one that I would highlight here is uh, Autodesk Remake. This is our photogrammetry application, which allows you to get pretty accurate. And if we're looking at uh, things on a different scale here, going, going smaller than buildings, um, people are like doing very uh, detailed scans with their phone and even 3D printing stuff. So um, what we have here is uh, someone scanning and 3D printing a bicycle pedal. You can actually uh, try this. There's a, there's a trial here. I think you can do uh, this free for Mac. It's free versus Pro. I think it's 30 bucks a month. And it has like a little matrix down here. Um, sort of explaining the quality. So I think this is sort of where you're going with this, um, Anthony, like how, how detailed is it? So the more photos you have, the better the quality is gonna be. Um, and it's also worth just looking at the gallery here as well. Um, inside of the gallery, um, there's been some pretty uh, impressive scans where people have done it with their phones. Um, however, the better the lighting, the conditions, the better the uh, quality of the photo, the more photos you have, uh, the more accurate you're going to be. So this is just one worth worth checking out um, where you can you know, get some pretty incredible results with uh, photogrammetry scans. But um, probably f the, the best thing to do is to use a laser scanner if you want um, accurate data to um, work off. Uh, so let's move to the next question. Um, this can be drawn and recap, no need to export. So uh, you can draw over the top of the laser scan um, that you bring into Revit. However, if we look at um, Faro um, point sense for Revit, this is um, what used to be called uh, Qubit, and Faro has acquired this application. And what this does is it starts to automate some of the laser scans to Revit models. So um, it's worth checking it out. Um, so you'll get the laser scan. You can either do it natively inside a Revit without these type of add-ins. However, if you want it to um, automatically uh, recognize some of the laser scan information and then convert it, this is a, a handy add-in that will uh, help you do it. So please check that one out. It's an add-in. Um, the other one is scan to BIM. And this is by a, a reseller called Imaginate Technologies. And uh, inside of the scan to BIM, um, this will explain how you can um, work with your point clouds and Revit. So there's a few uh, third-party add-ins that work with Revit to help with that laser scanning. Okay, uh, so uh, next question is Insight Energy Analysis. So this is the six star rating, so this is relating to the um, Australian uh, Green Star. So the Insight 360 is uh, its conceptual energy analysis and a lot of it is geared up for the uh, LEED accreditation, so Insight 360. Um, there is a blog that explains a little bit more on this. Um, there has been some announcements with regards to uh, 
um, a new daylight analysis tool here and there, I saw something recently where there was a mention of um, uh, an Australian standard CEP65. Um, so there are um, some tools in here that do relate to the Australian standards in, in various states. However, um, check this one out. Um, it is conceptual, so um, it's not the same as Ecotect, which used to be a lot more uh, detailed. Um, the other one I'd, I'd recommend here is uh, if you're looking at wanting to get accurate analysis, um, there's the Dynamo tool. Um, just find this and uh, a user here in Australia has actually um, documented how you do this. Um, this is a, a guy I used to work with at uh, HOK in London, Paul Winter, and uh, it starts to look at um, analysis for, for housing. So uh, Paul works at uh, BVN and they're doing a housing design here. And he's gone through a workflow of actually using uh, Dynamo scripting. And you do get uh, Dynamo, uh, I believe, as part of the uh, collections. Uh, it works with Revit. And he takes you through the workflow of how to set this up and use some basic uh, scripting here to um, look at uh, solar analysis inside the space. So that was, uh, if I just go back a little bit, that was uh, Paul's website, Parametric Mon Monkey. But the, the one to check out in the first instance would be the um, Insight 360 blog. If you do have any questions on that, just let me know. Um, I can contact uh, Stephanie from maybe a deeper dive explaining how the calculations are done. Uh, so next question is, how easy uh, to work with a civil 3D model? Um, so Revit will allow you to bring in AutoCAD data. So you can actually um, bring in um, anything that's AutoCAD based. Um, I do believe there is an update, Revit 2017, uh, Civil 3D. Um, let me come back to you on that because I know there was a um, an update on this in a, a recent release, um, but I have to talk to our Civil 3D on this. Um, Yeah, uh, I might have been with him for work, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, Nathaniel, drop me an email and I'll, I'll double check with you on that because I believe um, Steve Ellis, our Civil 3D expert, is familiar with um, that latest update. Uh, next question, how far away is AutoCAD Advanced Steel? Um, we have already um, Advanced Steel, which is based on AutoCAD. Um, so Advanced Steel, uh, is um, uh, an acquisition that we uh, acquired from Gratech. It's it's already available uh, now. Um, in Revit 2017, however, we did um, improve the interoperability between the applications. So uh, we did add a uh, connection detail package inside of Revit. There was about 22 different connection details that you can um, use. Um, and you can start to import and export your AutoCAD Advanced Steel information in, into Revit here. So um, AutoCAD Advanced Steel, the AutoCAD based Advanced Steel application is, is available um, and it does work with, with Revit as well and you can start to sync um, certain connection details with the AutoCAD Advanced Steel package. Okay, uh, so next next question. Um, if we added barcodes to all of the items in our gallery using Stingray or similar and ask our customers to scan items for selection of their home, uh, can we import the data into Revit, update the plans automatically without having to manually update it in the specs of the Revit file? Um, so uh, my understanding of this is that um, you want to put the barcodes inside the Revit application. Um, there are ways to do that, um, and I believe um, it's like a SAP uh, application. I know Coles do something with this. Um, it would require a bit of customization. Um, 
uh, if you want to email me on that, um, again, um, this is my email here in the background. Um, I could probably provide you a bit more detail on that, um, uh, Jeremy. Um, another thing um, just to be aware of here is we have a new product called Autodesk Play. And this is the one where it takes the uh, information, the panorama information, and it stitches it all, all together uh, for you to share with your client. So if I go to um, the, and again, this is beta, so um, it's not a, uh, a full product at the moment. You can get access to the labs. But what this does is it allows you to bring in your uh, panoramas from the cloud here and stitch them together. Um, so you can see this one here, um, stitched together, look around the room, and uh, when you've got this on the headset, you just look at that arrow, and it takes you to the next space. So there's, there's all these different tools here. Um, if you want to sign up to the beta version of this, um, this is just one of the templates you can use, but there's numerous other ones where you can start to customize uh, the data. Uh, so just, just moving back to Nathaniel's questions, uh, will these only work with the latest versions of Revit, Civil 3D, etc.? Um, so uh, Revit uh, 2016, 2015, 2017, um, the stuff that I've shown today will, will work with, with any of those versions. Um, Revit just isn't backwards compatible, but um, uh, any add-ins or anything, whatever I've shown, is all was all based on a 2016 version of, of Revit. So, um, yeah, what I've been showing will work with, with those versions. Okay, um, so next question. Uh, for the housing industry, uh, how is the best way to set up the Revit model? Share with different people, Arc the engineer. Um, so the best thing to do is to set up what's called a BIM execution plan. And um, probably the, the best example of that is what they're doing in the, uh, the UK. Um, so you can see here um, we have uh, information already coming up. You know, it's all UK based because they've mandated the use of BIM. Um, so this will give you a bit, bit more information, um, official information on um, BIM execution plans and who should have certain responsibilities because um, you do want to make sure that everybody's in agreement on how you sort of set it, set it up. Um, if you want to look um, at it a little bit more locally, we have the um, Australian New Zealand Revit Standards. That's the ANZRS. Um, this would be another one to, to look at. So if you're collaborating with other users and you want to make sure everybody's working to a localized standard, um, this is a, a good one to look at. Um, and this may explain a little more about um, uh, BIM execution plans and how you should be uh, setting up. Um, probably in the first instance, it's good to talk to your reseller because they help customers with the setup of Revit templates and discuss how far you actually want to take the data. So if you want to take it to just producing a set of plans, sections, elevations, details and schedules, um, you may not need to put in a huge amount of information. But if you want to go all the way through and take it right through to fabrication with a steel fabrication fabricator or timber framework, or etc., um, it's worth um, building the model in the right way or setting up in the right way so it can be leveraged further down the road. But here's um, um, a lot of uh, downloads that you can get access to um, for recommendations on um, different workflows here. So there's no um, instant answer. Um, I think look at these type of sites um, or talk to your um, local reseller. Um, the other one is the um, National BIM Library. And again, this is the UK, um, which is probably a little more aligned with, with our region. Um, so we have the National BIM Library and uh, there's BIM tools and guides. Um, and it starts to explain uh, templates. So this is where you'd probably be starting when you uh, kick off Revit. You want to make sure it's got a template. And that's like a database with um, all the typical stuff you'd use in your project, um, all the um, graphical annotation display, like you want your dimensions to look a certain way, you want your sheets to look a certain way. Um, 
the templates will help you with that. So whenever anybody fires up a project, they get asked to choose a template. If I just zoom in here a little bit, that's the template file on the screen. So you have your company template, and it could be for house design one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you'd load up that template and it would load in all the information you need to uh, build to a certain standard and you'd want to have your structural engineers or your mechanical engineers um, all working to the similar template so when you log in, uh, load in their information it's going to come in on the right share coordinate location and it's going to read the way you want it to read with your drawings. Yeah, so uh, just the next question was, the different parties need to be using the same templates. I ideally, you want them to be using um, a similar template. Um, you want to make sure that um, also you've uh, agreed on your project coordinates. So Revit project coordinate uh, setup. Um, and, and again, this is uh, something important. Um, so when you do discuss it with your other uh, collaborators, you want to make sure that the survey points and everything is all set up correctly. So we do have um, the Autodesk Knowledge Network here, and this has a, a wealth of data in terms of how to get started. Um, so this will tell you everything about templates, uh, there's a number of downloads here as well, and tutorials and troubleshooting. Um, this will give you all the latest and greatest from our applications. And uh, for anybody um, who wants to uh, learn a little bit more about Revit, um, because I didn't do a deeper dive on it today, we do have on the uh, Autodesk uh, website here, um, under my playlists, I think it is, So where are we? So I've got uh, 70 videos, and this does actually cover uh, quite a lot of uh, products. And for anybody wanting to look at a more detailed dive on moving from 2D AutoCAD to Revit, I've uh, provided another webinar here, which I did last year. And uh, the agenda of this one is Revit only. Um, but it talks about how you can rework with your 2D CAD data, parametric modeling, a bit of a deeper dive on families, and it was just explaining the suites when we had the suites. So uh, for anybody who wants to uh, look at that and just get a better understanding of templates and styles, um, this is the moving from AutoCAD to 3D Revit, and this is on the um, Autodesk ANZ YouTube website. So uh, Jeremy has a question, uh, will all importing AutoCAD files into Revit cause conflicts error in the Revit file? Um, what I recommend here, and this is actually on this uh, video that I've got on the screen at the moment, is when you import, you uh, link the file and don't embed it in the model. Um, I've heard from numerous users it can be very hard to get rid of it. So uh, just import it in, and I do have um, the notes on this here, so linking in 2D files and layer management, they're available. Link it in, it comes in with all the layers, and then you can choose to turn on and off layers, um, select line work in the model, and start to automate converting it into uh, wall types, etc. So this, this, a lot of these uh, questions are answered um, in this webinar, which um, you can watch on this, this website here. But um, it won't, um, if it's import, uh, if it's LinkedIn, it won't cause uh, any issues. Okay, so we're now uh, quarter past one. Uh, so we had some good, good Q&A today. Um, I'll just double check and see if there's no other questions in the chat. Okay, so uh, for, for those uh, still on, if you do want to get in contact, uh, just a reminder here, um, here's my email address. I'm happy to answer any questions offline, uh, share any links to any of the sites that are shown at the end of this webinar in the Q&A section. Um, and again, our Autodesk ANZ marketing team 
ha uh, we'll have a copy of this recording and we will make it available. So uh, please uh, get in contact as a follow-up and uh, we can share this with you. And again, um, here's my email. Feel free to drop me a note. Thanks very much.